right, you're gonna start by, uh, you can either look in here or you can look in here. It might be less frustrating to look in here. Here's our, I call it, um, our Bible, our, our freeze down book. We know that we're using AA394. So I'm gonna look up AA394. A, a, it's this first number right here, AA394, there it is. And I'm gonna go over here. Oh, look, it's one of the ones that doesn't actually have where it's located. So normally you can do that. So here is a map of our uh, liquid nitrogen freezer space. Um, and so we're gonna find AA394. So now this is just gonna be a hunt because of that. All right, uh, 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 434, I think it was in this area someplace. Here we go. AA394, here's one. And if you look, there's a little arrow that goes all the way down here and all, oh look, there's one right there. I'm gonna take that one. So when I take this, I'm gonna put my initials, RMB, and I'm gonna put today's date, which is 6-27-16. And I'm gonna note, this is row one, two, three, four, five, and column one, two. Row, column, in, blue rack, Four. Blue four. Okay, so uh, cells are in here. Here's our liquid nitrogen stock. The um, code on here is 1018. Uh, it's also taped to the top drawer next to my bench if you don't want to have to look through this video. Of course, you have to find out that information from the video. And you might have to wiggle around a little bit. It's on the line right here. Open. Here's four colors. It was blue, four. All right, before I go on, safety. When you use liquid nitrogen, don't want to splash it in my eyes. I got to have my safety glasses on, both the side shields, and a face shield on as well. You can also wear blue gloves. Blue gloves are right here. All right, it was blue. I'm going to let it sit there and let the, the nitrogen um, drip off a little bit. Here we're looking at the ginger box a little bit. All right, it's blue four. One, two, three, four. It's written on here. Blue four on the front. Blue four. Make sure front is pointing toward you and make sure it says front down here as well. All right, so we knew it was column five, uh, sorry, row five, column two. Row five, one, two, three, four, five, column two, one, two. Should be this one, double check. AA394, and it is mouse B cells. So I'm gonna stick them in here in the styrofoam for a sec. I'm gonna now make sure front is right on top of front put stuff back. Way for sure put this in or you're going to be in big trouble. Put my face shield back down. Put it back in with an idea. All right, we're going to line up. There's a little slot right here. Line this slide up, slot up right here. And put my lock back on. Nasty stuff in there, so we have to keep it locked up. I'm going to take this, I'm going to make sure it's tight all the way down, so I'm just going to go like that, and then I'm not going to hold the end anymore, and I'm also not going to point it at my face or anybody else because there could be liquid nitrogen stuck in there, and that could turn into a bullet. All right, so pointing away from everybody, I'm going to stick this in here. I'm going to make sure that the pink level is going to be uh, below the water level. And I'm going to put it in the water bath. And then I'm going to put one minute and 25 seconds. And then check it after that. Okay, so we got, got our, um, our timer going off. We're now going to check and see if the ice crystal's gone. And so I'm just going to invert it a couple times. Nope, the ice crystal is still there. So I'm going to stick it back in there. And yep, it is at 36. We'll try again. We'll put about another 20 seconds on there. 
Or I'm just gonna, um, yeah, put about another 20 seconds on there. I'll just look at it on the clock. <laughs> and I'm not gonna take my little guy out again, invert it. There's a little teeny ice crystal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually invert it about five or six more times until the ice crystal is now gone. And now I can do one of two things. I can either have a little beaker and dunk this in 70% ethanol or just really, really spray it until it is dripping and especially around those, uh, the opening to the cap, okay? I'm also spraying my hands off pretty good and I'm spraying both hands because I might touch that cap with both hands. I'm gonna get a relatively clean, whatever my tissue is I'm using and kind of tap it uh, right off. These are level one cells, so I'm going to be reaching in and out of the hood. So take the cap off. Bam. Take one milk. Uh, serologic pipette. Transfer. Again, you're going to go in and try not to touch uh, the inside screw area of the cap. I'm going to go up. And even though I inverted it, I'm going to go down once. I'm going to try not to introduce too many bubbles because cells that are just being thawed, their um, cell wall is usually a little bit... Um, and as I came out, I didn't touch anything. Usually their cell wall is just a little bit more... Uh, you can rupture it fairly easily, so you don't want to have a lot of shear forces by bubbles going up through this little um, volume. I'm going to gently put this in the bottom of my... Um, of my 15 uh, ml um, centrifuge tube and now I'm going to um, dilute out the cryoprotectant and wash it out so you can use as little as six milliliters and as many as you know, as you want probably not more than nine I'm gonna use six I usually use about six milliliters to wash out cryoprotectant um, cell lines are specific some cell lines I would just put um, I would have a 10 or 11 milliliters in a T75 flask and I just place that one milliliter into the T75, let it rest overnight, and then uh, change the media in the morning. The, this cell line wants you to wash it out, so I'm going to use six milliliters to wash it out and then centrifuge. Oh, my water. Uh, again, centrifugation is cell line specific. This cell line wants you to centrifuge, it's the um, female mouse B cell line. You're going to centrifuge this one for five minutes at, make sure this says RCF, 0.3 RCF, and not RPM. You see how the 0.3 RPM turned into 1.4, I mean, yeah, it turned into 1.4 RPM under RCF, so you want to make sure you're on the right count. It's the RCF, which is actually 300 times G, because this little thousand down here means it's 0.3 times a thousand. All right, so it's going, and the way you can tell it's going is because the little black square is coming and going. Also, the time is going down. And also, if you feel it, it's actually, it still shakes a little bit. All right, so our stuff is done. I'm gonna put my little, push up this. I actually usually turn it off too. Put this back to my balance. Okay, these are level one cells, so if you want, you can use the aspirator. Um, I'm gonna plate these into a T75. The T75 is usually found over here. Once you have a bag open, this is Roseanne being OCD. Um, I usually have the open bag over right here. So I'm going to grab one and we're just going to use this. I'm going to put the rest of the bag up there when I finish. All right, we're going to aspirate the supernate. So I'm going to try not to touch, touch the tip on anything so it's clean coming out. All right, so now we got our aspirator uh, line in here. So. Again, I'm only gonna touch this part. I'm not gonna touch that part because I want it to be clean going in. I'll put the back side on my aspirator. Obviously, there's not a cotton ball there because this is gonna go into the aspirator. Here we go. Okay, the way I do this is I take the tip and I put the tip of the bend right here because I don't want to get anywhere near the pellet because I might suck up the pellet. So I'm gonna take the tip I'm going to first suck off any bubbles that are right here, and then I'm going to put it right at that bend. And then I tilt 
the media toward the bend. Don't get anywhere near the pellet. This is where you break up the pellet when there's very little media. Break up the pellet. That didn't matter. All right, now we're gonna get a 10 milliliter pipette man, a serologic pipette, sorry, and use our pipetter to add 10 milliliters of warmed media to our cells. The pellet's broken up. We're gonna grab it, rinse up and down a couple times, still being kind of gentle with the cells. Less worried about bubbles because it's not such a small volume. Add that to my T75. Don't touch the uh, any any part of the of the neck if you can going in. Swirl around. Now I'm gonna um, make sure I have a good distribution of my cells. I'm mixing my cells in my media. Now I'm gonna spread my cells, even though these are the non-adherent cells, I'm spreading my cells. So I'm gonna go one, let it settle, two, let it settle, three, let it settle, to the left, let it settle, to the right, let it settle. And now I'm going to label my, uh, my flask. So I'm going to find the information for my tube. I'm going to use one of the pins that has a flat top on it so when I ethanol things, the writing doesn't go away. This is permanent. And on my tube it says female mouse B cells. And it says AA394. The other information I'm going to put on here is my as today's date, 627-16. And my initials, RMD. You can also put the time, and it's 3.20 p.m. Now we're just going to put this in the, the hood. This is a vintage cap because this media needs to have um, CO2. The CO2 is about 5%. And there you go. We're going to count them again tomorrow. See what the density is. You want to keep those cells between 0.2 uh, and 1 million cells. Okay. This is set on 12 microliters. I'm gonna make sure I got a good mix of cells. These are detached cells. So I'm mixing the cells, getting them off the bottom, taking a 12 microliter aliquot, putting it in my Eppendorf tube, getting a fresh tip so I don't contaminate my Taipan blue with little cell pieces. This is a one-to-one -one mix. Easy, don't have to reset this at all. I just take 12 microliters oh, of that. Oops, that was messy. That's why we have that. I'm gonna add that. Mix. Same thing. This will pull up 10 microliters. So I'm just going to feed uh, a little bubble of cells right here. Mixture, it'll pull into it. It won't overfill. I didn't I didn't push anything in. I just let it pull it in. Done with that part. Now we're going to count. All right. So I got my hemocytometer on my inverted microscope. This uh, uh, objective I'm using is a 10x objective. And I'm going to look in my, um, my uh, binoculars here and just see um, where the grid is. It should all look blue under here. Um, and I'm going to find... This particular set of cells has got a, a this particular bunch has got a has got a really high count. So um, if I have a really really high count of like if I have over 100 cells per, uh, you'll get the little printout of um, of the grid. But if I have over 100 cells per one ninth of the grid, then I'm just going to count the center cells. And if I have 35 or less, I'm going to count all nine grids. If I have around 50, I'm gonna count, you know, the five, the four outside in the middle. And I have, if I have somewhere between 50 and 100, I'm just gonna count a diagonal. So I'm only gonna count three of those, of those, uh, of those nine. Okay, so um, I counted the center grid. And again, let me actually put this on the tape. Um, 
the center grid, when you look at this whole thing, like one field of view is going to look like one ninth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ninth of the entire grid that, that's, uh, that's outlined. This particular uh, bunch of cells was, uh, had such a high count, had such a high density that I just counted the center grid. In that center grid, I counted 147 cells. I counted 11 blue cells. This actually is W for white and B for blue. If you add 147 and 11, and then you, um, you, uh, you take 11 and you divide it by whatever that is, 158, that's 7% blue. That tells me how many cells are dead, okay? I take the 147, I only counted the middle grid, so I'm only gonna divide by, by 100. If I'd counted all nine grids, I'd divide by 900. If I count a diagonal of three, I'd I divide by 300. So I divide by however many, uh, however many uh, of, the, of the nine grids I counted times 100. And then I'm multiplying by two because if you remember with the Taipan blue, I diluted one to two. So that's my dilution factor. 147 times two divided by 100 is 2.94. That's the number you get. And what that is, is with the hemocytometer, you just go times 10 to the six cells per milliliter. We're gonna do the cleanup for the aspirator. So what we're gonna do is, there's bleach over here. We need to clean the line. So with the aspirator going, I'm gonna let some bleach run through until I see it's hitting the, the uh, catch trap down there. And then, I'm gonna let the bleach run all the way through. It should be all the way downhill so it's not sitting anywhere. And the way I usually finish this off is I just make sure this tip stays all the way up. And I clamp it onto here with this tip staying all the way up. So it's just gonna run like that. Now I can turn the aspirator off. The next part is um, put my bleach away. And make sure all my lids are closed. So make sure all my Trash. Lids are closed. Oops, trash. Lids here are closed. Take everything that, everything, the only things that stay in the hood are the tips, the uh, um, pasture pipettes, and the serologic pipettes. Everything else comes out of this hood. Take everything else out. I'll just stick it here for right now. And then you're going to get a wiper. And you're going to spray everything down with 70% um, ethanol. You spray this mostly because you might have like stuck your forehead on it or sneezed on it or something. And it's just really nice to wipe it down to the next person. That's why you wipe, wipe the outside. Oops. So you always wipe from the back to the front and from the inside to the outside. All right? Good. Things one is right now I'm dressed for level one, uh, level one tissue culture, so I, I don't have my outer coat on and I just have gloves on. Um, so when we uh, have an open uh, open container, I usually tape it shut um, and we put them up on this shelf right here. Clean it to so one of these two shelves. The other thing we do is when you finish, after you've cleaned everything out, you go back to front. You make sure all of the top secret containers are closed. So make sure this is closed and this is closed. You're going to pull back the chair beyond. You'll see there's a UV line where the floor is going to be. Pull back that chair beyond the UV line. You're going to leave the hood running and you're going to turn the lights to UV. And again, we pull the chair out because that way the vinyl on the chair lasts for years. Yeah, these